Hi guys, welcome to Photography Takeaway with Laura. We are on episode seven now. So I thought now would be a really good time to think about our aspirations for the future and um, try and be a bit more positive, especially in light of everything that's happening at the minute to do with coronavirus. So what I've got in this video is some options of stuff you can do after you finish with us in your studies, whether that be university, apprenticeships or jobs. And I've also done some interviews with some industry professionals as well, asking them about their tips and tricks um, that they've learned whilst being in the industry, but also how they got there and what their career path is. So there are three different pathways that students commonly go into after finishing studying with us. It is university, apprenticeships and straight into a career. With university, the idea is you're developing your academic side in order to get a a career so whether that's a higher career um, in a job that requires a university degree an apprenticeship is for people who want training in their specific industry and these are really competitive especially in film and photography and then you've got straight into a job which a lot of jobs at the moment especially in the creative industries do go based off portfolio so with university, especially if you're a first year student watching this, now is a really good time to be thinking about university, especially what sort of course you want to do, as well as if you want to stay local or whether you want to move further away from home. So it might be that you like the look of UCLan or the University of Salford, or you might want to move somewhere a little bit further afield, such as London or Edinburgh or Brighton as just a few that spring to mind. So the things that you really need to be thinking about at the moment are the sorts of courses you want to do. So whether that is film production or photography, something more specific and niche such as script writing or prop design or set design. Um, you can find a lot of courses in the, around the country that do those specific genres of degree. Um, but also thinking about writing your personal statement. So in your personal statement, which is limited to 4,000 characters, um, you are talking about what is it about the subject you want to study that really inspires you? What experience have you got? Who inspires you in terms of practitioners? So photographers, filmmakers or specific films, um, but also why they should choose you. A lot of film courses, especially at prestigious universities, are really competitive. So it's important you can stand out. So if you are a first year student, um, you really do need to start thinking about your personal statement and writing that. At the minute, don't limit yourself to a certain word count or character count. Write as much as possible because it is far easier to um, take words out and take paragraphs out than it is to add stuff into it. Okay, and with apprenticeships, again, apprenticeships are so competitive. There aren't that many around and the ones that are are with really prestigious companies such as the BBC or ITV, just to name a few. Now, if you are thinking of doing an apprenticeship after you finish your studies with us at college, it is really important to start looking now at those opportunities. There are um, opportunities with the popular broad broadcasting companies such as the BBC, ITV, Channel 4, um, they all have different deadlines and different opening times but also different criteria that you need to look out for. So if you are thinking of doing an apprenticeship, please start your research now so that you can be prepared. Um, there are hundreds if not thousands of students applying for these every year and there are only a few spaces available so you need to make sure you stand out from the crowd in doing that. If you are certain you don't want to go to university or do an apprenticeship and you want to go straight into a career, you need to decide what sort of career that is. So whether you want to take a gap year to save up a bit of money to go to university or to travel, um, you do need to start looking at the sort of careers you want to go into, whether that is creative or not. So if you are a first year student or even a level two who wants to get a job in the industry or outside of the industry, I think you should be spending this time whilst you're away from college really working on your CV. So it is really important that you start to develop your transferable skills. So we're talking about teamwork, communication, leadership, um, delegating responsibilities and stuff like that. All the stuff that people and companies will look at on your CV and making sure that you stand out. Again, jobs are really competitive, especially in the, in the industry, and there will be 
hundreds of people just like you looking for that same job. So it is really important to start um, brushing up on those skills, making a really good CV to stand out from the crowd. I would really recommend the Barclays Life Skills website. I'll link it down in the description. That has um, loads of resources in terms of different types of interview you might encounter. At the minute we've been in lockdown, people are still being interviewed for jobs. So um, they'll be doing Skype interviews or video call interviews. There's quite a lot of different things going on at the moment. So it is really important that you have a look at that website and just see what you can find in this time. Okay, so for the second part of this video, I've um, spoke to some of my friends and people that I know in the industry and asked them to um, speak to you guys via a voice recording of how they got into the industry, what their typical day looks like as a creative professional, but also what they recommend as sort of tips and tricks for you guys to prepare for getting into the industry. So the first person that I spoke to was Samuel. Um, Samuel is a filmmaker, he's a director, he's an editor, he basically does everything, he's a photographer. Um, and I'll show some of his work on the screen now. Okay, so some of you will have seen Sam's work before. He is my husband, and I'm not just saying all these nice things about him because of that. He took a different path into his career than most people would do. It wasn't linear in that respect. So he took a gap year, went to a university, um, changed his mind and all stuff like that. So um, I'll play the little interview from Sam now, and it's really important just to remember that it doesn't matter what route you take into your dream career, that you just need to make those positive steps forward. Hi, I'm Sam Fenton, and currently I am a freelance director of photography, catering to video and photography clients. This includes music videos, films, commercials, corporate work, amongst other stuff. What does a typical day look like in your profession? I think it's a difficult question to answer because as a freelancer, there is no such thing as a typical day. You find that you're either flat out working 18 hour days, shooting, editing, producing, everything, or you've got sometimes quite long periods of time where you don't actually have any work on. Now, to me, these are even more stressful times because that's when you've really got to be putting yourself out there and looking for work, networking with people. I always say that every conversation that you have is a potential lead for a new client. You know, it's always make a good first impression with everyone you meet because you never know when they're going to come back and ask you to do some work for them. If you were to give one piece of advice for a young person going into the industry, what would it be? It's hard to pick one piece of advice, but I think... The main thing would be never give up. I've been doing this for 10 years now and the first few years, it was quite dry. It was quite difficult. You know, it was quite difficult to make ends meet. And I suppose I was lucky enough to still be living at home at this time. So if that is the situation that you're in, really take advantage of it because it gives you that freedom to put yourself out there and build them contacts and them clients without obviously the stresses of paying the mortgage. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I think, you know, persevere with it. I don't personally advertise myself as a freelancer. It's all the work that I get is word of mouth. Now, the only reason that that's possible is because obviously over the years, I've worked with a lot of people, you know, I've developed that reputation and 
that branding of my business that then, you know, for every client I work for, if they get asked by a couple of clients, you know, you know, it's like a, almost like a pyramid scheme, I suppose you could say. I think, yeah, just, just never give up and always remember that during them dry spells, work will come if you go out and get it. But just furthermore to that last point, doing what's right for you is pursuing your goal. So don't think that a gap year is the easy option. In fact, if if anything, it was harder, you know, going in straight into three more years of education would have been quite a secure, stable routine. But I sort of broke out of that and found myself through a lot of a lot of hours of working, a lot of hard work, quite low income. You know, it's all about building yourself up to know exactly what you want to do. But whatever that is, there's no right or wrong path. Okay, so the next person I spoke to was Sarah. Sarah is a beauty photographer based in London and I had the pleasure of going to uni with her at the University of Salford from 2012 to 2015. Um, Whilst we were at university, Sarah really works on her beauty and fashion portfolio and now she's um, an established beauty photographer in London working with some really big clients such as Primark and big companies like that which is amazing. So um, I'll show some of Sarah's photography work on the screen as I play her little interview that she's done for you guys. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a freelance beauty photographer living in London. I feel like as a freelancer my job can vary so much. Um, No two days are the same really. Um, I mean when I'm shooting with clients it's normally an early call time. Um, I have to drive across all the way to North London, and I live in South London, um, with all my kit. Um, and then I'll meet my assistants there, um, who will help me set up. I'll kind of tell them how I want to light it, like what I kind of want to get from the shoot. And then I'll probably sit down with the creative director and kind of go through the looks and like what assets they need to take off through the day. Um, and then at the end of the day, um, if there's time, we'll probably do some spontaneous looks because sometimes they're the best shots. Um, yeah, so well, in, in contrast to that, I do think it's not all glitz and glamour. Like, there is a lot of days where I'm retouching because I do all my retouching myself. So I would say about more than half the time I'm in my pyjamas, retouching, working on my social media, invoices all that jazz from home so it's kind of a contrast because so people think it's like this really glitz and glamour job and it's very much a bit of both I would say I think a bit of advice I could give if you really want to break into the industry is to find your niche um so you need to kind of ask yourself what makes you different from everyone else um like what makes the client want to book you rather than a competitor. Um, I've always kind of gone with the mindset to give your client as least work as possible. If you're giving them exactly what they want on a plate, you're bound to get noticed for that because at the end of the day, people don't people want to do the bare minimum to get the best results. So you be that person to kind of give them that result without them doing the work. Um, I'd also say social presence is very important for what I do anyway. Um, everyone is al- always looking at their phones. And base- and with Instagram especially, it's like a portfolio. People can just scroll down and it's right in front of their nose. So if the right people see it, they'll hopefully book you. And it just, we've all been there when we've been scrolling down Instagram and you get lost in different people's feeds. So if you're there and all your work's on it, it's more of a chance to get noticed, I think. Okay, the next person I've got is Kelly. Kelly is a editor for Hype, which is a clothing brand. And I also went to university with Kelly at Salford. And during her time at Salford, she really worked on her uh, retouching portfolio and her Photoshop skills. And that is how she's got into an industry that is really competitive at the moment as an editor and a retoucher. So again, I'll show some of her work on the screen 
alongside her interview I also have some really really cool back behind the scenes images that she's taken while she's on some of her shoots um, which I'm really envious of um, so I'll put those on the screen as well. Hi I'm Kelly and I currently work as a senior photographer and retoucher for Just Type. I've been here for three and a half years. It's difficult for me to say what I do on a typical day because my role is so varied. Some days I'll be in the studio taking creative images for our Instagram feed, uh, which can be anything from a paddling pool in the sun with some sliders or hanging things from the ceiling with fishing wire. Um, other days I might be taking pictures of models for the website or maybe building a set for a collaboration campaign. Um, I also have to edit all of the photos that I take, so I spend a lot of time behind my computer retouching all of my images, uh, anywhere from e-commerce product photography um, up to a campaign which will be on the side of a building. If I had to give some advice to anybody looking to break into the industry, it would be to shadow or assist as many people as you can. Uh, get yourself an internship, take all of the free time in the studio as you can, because studios are not cheap when you finish university. Okay, so moving away from sort of photography, I've got two people on uh, my list now who have done journalism. So the first person we've got is Dan. Dan is a podcast uh, producer for the Manchester Evening News. He also went to the University of Salford. This video is not sponsored by the University of Salford, um, but Dan creates podcasts, which we'll talk about in his interview now. My name is Dan McLaughlin and I am a podcast producer for Reach PLC. I work um, for the Manchester Evening News and I work for the Liverpool Echo. I'm working on the Laudable project. It's a Google funded project that um, means we create podcasts with a local community angle to it. So the sort of podcast we've been working on is from anything from the general election podcast, the North Pole, to a podcast about 1980s Liverpool called The Brink. Um, I've been working on Helen Wood's Chats too, um, a sort of an interview-based programme, The Menopod in Liverpool. And I'm currently the host of Alone Together, a coronavirus podcast, where we are finding the positive community stories that are coming out of the pandemic, as well as answering people's FAQs about the lockdown and everything that goes with it. I'm also a radio presenter. I present and produce The Coalition of Chaos on Reform Radio. I've been doing that for a couple of years now. That's what I call my News, Views and Blues show. Um, I have also previously worked as a freelance journalist, uh, primarily for Perspex News, which is another Reach PLC website that looks at free sides to the stories. So I would find two opposing viewpoints in the press and would, I would write a neutral background explainer piece. These pieces would go out across um, the country, um, whether it's Wales Online, Manchester Evening News, Liverpool Echo, Cambridge for Live, etc., etc., um, I've also delivered lectures on journalism and podcasting um, at different universities in the UK and I've taught media as well. A typical day for me is hard to describe because it's a cliche to say it, but there is not necessarily a typical day. I will work on recording podcasts with presenters, with senior journalists at the news organisations. I would edit podcasts, they would take a while. I would interview people myself, research stories, script stories, uh, do all the production. So there's a lot of things I do. It's not necessarily a nine to five job um, working in journalism, especially production journalism. Um, so my job differs day to day, whether it's presenting, producing, editing, etc. If I was to give one piece of advice to young people about being in the industry, it's simply never turn down an opportunity, especially when you're younger. So every opportunity that comes, be it work experience, be it placements, be it just sort of volunteering, get as much on your CV as possible. Your qualifications, whether that's GCSEs or BTECs, whatever, are important. They really are. That's your bare minimum. But what's going to impress employers is the work experience that you've gathered over the years, whether it's hospital radio, your local newspaper, working at, on, at the BBC. The BBC tends to have uh, work experience placements in maybe more ordinary times. So never turn down an opportunity. Build up your CV full of different opportunities. And it doesn't have to be just the one thing. You don't necessarily think, I want to be a journalist, therefore I'm going to write news stories. Do everything, because I started out 
as a broadcast journalist, and that's my training initially. Then I went into print and online journalism, and now I'm in a completely different medium of podcasting. So don't limit yourself, get as much on that CV as possible. Okay, and another person who works in the journalism industry is Joe, and he's from Perspex News. Um, a great thing about media is it is so versatile, and especially on our course, you'll learn a lot about journalism. So it is a pathway that you can take from college into university. So I'll play Joe's interview now. I'm a freelance journalist for Reach PLC. I've been working there for just over three years now and previously I've had some experience working in social media. I've also had a lot of positions in other journalistic areas during my time as a student, voluntary work or covering the election or doing things for a final project for example. What does a typical day look like in your profession? Researching, writing, editorial meetings. The first thing really is working out what I'm actually going to be covering that day and doing some preliminary research, working out the angles that I might take on a story. And then I have to pitch them uh, in a meeting, and then I'll get told which ones that I will need to prioritise, which ones to go ahead with. And then there's more research, working out that all the details and all the facts of the story, making sure that I'm writing the right thing. And then it, throughout that, it gives me an idea of what I'm going to be writing and how I'm going to structure the story and the different viewpoints that I can take. And what sort of stories do you cover on a day-to-day basis? Politics mostly, which up until recently involved wall-to-wall Brexit coverage. But now since that is over, it's a lot of coronavirus now. Everything is, almost everything is a coronavirus story. Uh, A lot of the reasoning behind story choices is driven by what people want to read. And people want to read a lot of coronavirus things and what people want to know facts about, and people would love to know facts about coronavirus and all the various things that are happening with it. And where would we find the stories that you would typically write? Uh, The stories go out, the main stories that we do go out on uh, the regional papers published by Reach PLC, so things like the Manchester Evening News, the Liverpool Echo, lots of regional sites with the live suffix tend to fall under their banner, like Leeds Live, Cambridge Live, that sort of thing. So they tend to be sort of national stories explained for a regional audience, the kind of things that you would want to know that going on around you and you'd want to discuss, even if your focus is primarily on what's going on in your immediate area. If you were to give one piece of advice for a young person going into the industry, what would it be? Give two pieces of advice. The first is write, 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 write as much as you can. It will really help your style and it means that you've got something to show to people when they ask. Show us how you're enthusiastic about doing journalism. You can have something to show them. And the second thing is, if you need to get in contact with somebody, use the phone. Texts and emails and other kinds of messages can be ignored. They can be put down. If you ring somebody up and speak to them and actually get a direct conversation with them, you're going to get far more out of them. Do not be scared of picking up the phone if you have to talk to somebody. And the next person we've got as an interview is a little bit different. Ryan is an animator. He does cartoons and other animations for companies. He's done a lot of stuff for Blackburn Council. Um, So although it's not directly related to film and photography, we have had students in the past go on to do animation and art and fine art and stuff like that. So I thought it would be really useful to ask him some of his tips and tricks into getting into that industry just in case she was interested. So I'll play his interview now. Hello, my name is Ryan and I'm a freelance animator. I'm a part-time sales assistant in a furniture store and part-time freelance animator. I choose to have two part-time jobs because although animation is my dream job, it's not very active or social. My freelance jobs, on the other hand, have had me working with the NHS, Channel 4, and multiple online personalities and organisations. Because I'm a freelancer, I work from home, so once I'm ready to start the day, I will go to my home office and I'll um, check my emails and I'll make sure everything's up to date. Then I'll make a plan for everything that I want to get want to get done that day. So that could be character design, it could be storyboards, or it could be just corresponding with a client. A full day for me is usually about eight or so hours, uh, all in all. But I don't usually stop until I'm satisfied, so I see a lot of late nights, which is uh, something you can do when you work from home. 
My advice to anybody that wants to get into animation, freelance or otherwise, would be you need to separate your home or living space from your workspace as soon as possible. That could be a home office or that could be renting out an office space. Just separate the two entirely. It'll make you a lot healthier and a lot happier and just trust me, it is something that you want to do. Because trust me when I say, nobody likes a freelance zombie. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed those interviews. I think it is really important to speak to people who are already in the industry and um, find out from the people who have already been there. It's all well and good uh, me sitting here and saying what I think about the industry, but it is really important to connect with those people. Now, uh, a key point that came across in all of those interviews was the experience and gaining experience while she can. Um, and that is part of the course at the minute and it is something really important that you should be looking at so please do listen to that advice from those industry professionals and try and get as, as much experience as possible whether that's through work experience on the second year of our program or through work experience you found yourself or even through park productions which we do at college it's always really useful to pop on CV and it makes you stand out from anybody else okay now just to end this video I thought I'd um, add some more tips and tricks and recommendations that I've got for getting into the media industry. I used to work as a fashion photographer and a beauty photographer. I'm now doing my master's in photography so I still have an idea of what goes on in the industry. I think it's really important to again as everyone said um, experience but also volunteer so try and volunteer and gain media experience in charities if you do get that opportunity just make sure that those charities align with your beliefs and what you stand for as well because it always helps your portfolio but just try and give back to the community where you can whether that's through short promotional videos photographing an event or videoing an event um, it's good for your portfolio but it also helps the community another point that I want to add that you should bear in mind and I go on about this all the time but it is really important is staying focused and working hard so although um, at the minute we're in this stage of lockdown where you're having to work a little bit more independently it is really important to stay focused as much as you can it's really good for your mental health but it's also a really good time to develop your portfolio so whether that's you taking photographs when you're on your form of exercise every day or it's writing a script for a film that you'd love to do or it's making a video of your time in isolation, use this time really effectively and try to produce as much creative work as possible. And my final um, tip for the industry is just be you. It's really important that you formulate your career and develop your career based on your own personality. There's no point trying to pretend to be someone you're not or um, try and pursue a career that you're not interested in. We will support you as tutors to do whatever you wish to do in the industry or outside of the industry if that's what you want to do. So it's just really important to remember what your strengths are, what you're passionate about and focus on getting a career in that. Okay guys, that's it for today's episode. Um, as always, if you have any suggestions or questions that you have, either drop me a message on Teams, comment in the comments down below, or um, send us a message on Instagram, whether that's through our creative arts page or my personal photography account, which I will link in the description as well. Um, so yeah, that's all for today. Um, stay safe and I'll see you next time. Bye.